Closing the gap. As organizations garner increasing benefits from investments into intangibles, the challenge ahead for standard setters is to produce a set of reporting requirements that help organizations translate intangible value into meaningful financial information and close a perceived information gap. Article by Ram Supramanian, CPA Australia's Senior Manager in Reporting Policy. Physical assets are no longer the mainstay of transactional and stored economic value in many organizations. Businesses are increasingly investing into and benefiting from a range of intangibles, including technology, branding, research and development, and intellectual property. The IFRS, the International Financial Reporting Standards, have not kept pace with the rapid growth in organization value representing by intangibles. IAS 38 Intangible Assets was issued more than 20 years ago and since then, minimal changes have been made to the definition. Recognition criteria, measurement, presentation, disclosure requirements for intangible assets. There is a broad consensus among preparers, auditors, valuers, regulators, and users of financial statements that the current requirements would benefit from a review. Upon taking up his role as chair of the International Accounting Standards Board, Andreas Baklow acknowledged the rise of self-generated intellectual property and its non-addressal in the accounts as one of the challenges of the IASB. However, the inclusion of reliably measured information on intangibles that meet the IFRS asset definition and recognition criteria is no easy task. To better understand the impact of intangibles on an organization's economic value, a distinction needs to be drawn between intangible items that do not meet the definition of an asset, such as corporate culture, employees, customer loyalty, and intangible assets, for example, brand, research and development, and technology. The market places importance on information relating to both types of intangible value created and held by an organization. However, for the purposes of reliably identifying, measuring, recognizing, or disclosing such intangible value, costs incurred in respect of intangible assets are likely to be more readily identifiable than costs relating to intangible items that are not assets. Although the costs incurred in developing intangible assets might be separately identifiable, such costs may not always meet the IFRS asset recognition criteria as currently specified. For example, a company's expenditure on research and development may not always be expected to come to fruition in the form of future economic benefit, undermining the ability to consider such expenditure as an asset. While accounting challenges remain, standard setters have now begun responding to the call to provide better information on intangibles in financial statements. The AASB, the Australian Accounting Standards Board, has published a research staff paper called Intangible Assets, Reducing the Financial Statements Information Gap Through Improved Disclosures, which explores how disclosures would play a part in improved information on intangible assets. The paper notes that although IAS 38 encourages more minimal voluntary disclosures about significant unrecognized intangible assets, this is not widely adopted in practice. Reasons for the lack of uptake could include concerns about the challenges and costs associated with the audit of disclosed information and the potential loss of competitive advantage through disclosing proprietary or commercially sensitive information. Rather than immediately tackling the more difficult challenge of recognizing internally generated intangible assets on the balance sheet or waiting until those challenges can be met, the paper puts forward the idea that the current perceived information gap around intangibles could be, at least in part, addressed through specified disclosures about unrecognized internally generated intangible assets. Such disclosures should be underpinned by a principle that intangible asset disclosures should focus on those significant internally generated intangible assets that play a key role in pursuing the entity's objectives, and a disclosure objective that any information provided enables users to assess the current and expected future financial impact on the entity and management stewardship of those disclosed intangible assets controlled by the entity. The paper also suggests that consideration should be given to disclosing a range of factors for each significant unrecognized internally generated intangible asset, including the reason it is considered to play a key role for the organization. Any legal considerations or restrictions, its useful life, and a range of financial and non-financial factors. While there are costs associated with incorporating more information on the intangible assets into financial statements, the benefit to investors and other users of such information should not be ignored. 
Following a recent agenda consultation to establish the program of works in the next five years, the IASB has decided to include a research project to comprehensively review IAS 38. In pursuing this project, IASB staff are proposing a staged approach and similar to the focus of the AASB staff paper, a focus on enhanced disclosure requirements could be the first stage of that project. Further stages in the IASB project could also include a review of the scope of IAS 38 and a review of the definition, recognition, and management of intangible assets. The AASB is also expected to initiate a research project on the topic, as noted in its recent agenda consultation. The AASB is expected to deliberate this topic during 2022, with a view to include an intangible assets research project into its 2022 to 2026 program of works. While the focus of the IASB and AASB projects is on the reporting of intangible assets in financial statements, the interaction between these projects and the development of sustainability reporting standards by the International Sustainability Standards Board, the ISSB, needs to be kept in mind. Given that the focus of the ISSB's work is on the reporting of sustainability-related risks and opportunities that affect enterprise value, or the sum of the value of the entity's equity, market capitalization, and the value of the entity's net debt, there will be an overlap between the disclosure of information on intangible assets in financial statements and the reporting of information about intangibles in the context of the sustainability of the entity's business.